Hey, you're not, you're not welcome They're the around albino these. Editions. <laughs> albino editions. Wait, I'm a guest feature now. Vic outside, and I broke it yesterday. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one of those little things where you know. All right. All right, guys, so we're giving some much needed attention to the F100 today. For whatever reason, I've been having to this thing ran okay, but seems to be having a fuel delivery issue. So I have a couple ideas of what it is, but uh, there's a bunch of stuff to address in this thing. And overall, it's just not fun to drive anymore. And I'm gonna fix that. <laughs> Look, it's the guy that doesn't pay rent here anymore. <laughs> this is our teen's car, if you guys don't remember. He got his plate finally, which is pretty funny. But uh, yeah, I guess they're doing a little swoop swap of wheels on Chaz's new, new M3, I guess. So I'm just feeling so left out with this whole this M3 stuff. And the only guy out of like 16 guys doesn't have one. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. Wow, dude. Got the dub editions on there. Hey, you're not, you're not welcome They're the around albino these. albino editions. <laughs> albino editions. Wait, I'm a guest feature now. Yeah, I was going to say. Not welcome around these parts, brother. Hey, you brought one of these here. I'm coming here. <laughs> yeah, literally. This is Chaz's new car. This thing's sick. Apex, Ford. Yeah, man. Carbon fiber, carbon fiber. I don't know. It's a like. I'm on the fence. You gotta, you gotta really keep them bitches clean. <laughs> yeah. Those things but are. But she does it, obviously. Oh, sure <laughs> hey, you can really do an ad for ceramic coating with these things. <laughs> I dig it. Why don't you guys trade trade for a little bit? Well, we're going to, but at the same point, you have some <laughs> tires. You can take. I have, I have another set of tires. <laughs> on my Dude, yeah, those are mint. Yeah, look at these. This is definitely a clean title. Yeah. Tire. For sure. So, uh, as you can see, it's a little cold, and I got myself a nice jacket. You can get it too. So we have the small block killer. Hoodie. It's not available. We never made it before. A lot of guys asked for it, and I listened. So now we have this hoodie and a bunch of variety of different colors. Uh, all the way from greens, reds, blues, blacks, whites, gray. There's probably even a purple on there. I don't even know. There's a bunch of different colors, but you can choose from a wide range of different sizes and colors. They're all live on the website right now, 909speedcompany.com. Grab yourself some small block killer merchandise. We have the decals. I think there's a little bit of shirts and there's tank tops left. We have the hoodie uh, live now, freshly restocked, ready for you guys to go for winter. So head down to the description, check it out. If you want to support me in the builds, keep this thing going. If you want to be a small block killer yourself, head down to the description and check it out. All right, another FM3 stuff. So back to the, the normal gooder stuff. <laughs> so this is uh, the high compression small block that I built for this thing. So it can make 507 on the dyno and it is making anything but that right now. So when we pulled this thing off, turned it down a pretty good amount. I took, I think two degrees of timing out of it and I turned the rev limiter down to 6,500 in this thing. So on the dyno, we spun this thing up. I think the highest it spun was like 7,600. Right now it's spinning about 6,500 is where the rev limiter is set. And that is not making a lot of power. I think it's making like 430 at the crank right now. So all of the driving that you've seen from the mountain video that we did with this thing. As well as all of the other street driving, that's all like barely over 400 horsepower. So for all of you guys that want six, seven, eight, nine hundred horsepower in your cars, you really don't need it and this is proof of that. So, uh, but the one thing I'm noticing is it has a fueling issue uh, and I want to say it's the fuel pump or the filter uh, or a combination of those issues. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the air cleaner off and just kind of dive into it and actually figure out what the hell's going on with this thing. Because it just sucks to drive. You can hear it when it's running. It just doesn't, it's not getting enough of what it wants. So I'm going to give it to me. 
I also need to go ahead and clean up the inside of this thing, give it a little refresh, because I mean, we got rags everywhere, we got just stuff from shows. That's really the problem with taking these things to shows all the time, is your just truck gets full of crap. So, and I think I might finally buff this thing. Finally, maybe, I don't know. Bye, sir. Nice. So yeah, for those of you guys that didn't know, our team got another shop down the road. They got another shop down the road, so. Beavis and Butthead, gone forever. All right, so I'm pretty sure I had a bottle of brake fluid in here and it tipped over underneath my seat and I'm pretty sure it spilled and soaked the entire carpet in brake fluid because I have this like film on the carpet and I can feel it in my hands. Like you can see the shiny on my fingers. That's not really ideal. And when you step right here and then you grab the clutch pedal, you push the heavy clutch in this thing and then your foot slips off because brake fluid's very slimy. It's very gross. Uh, Chaz, let me borrow some of his carpet cleaner. This is some shine supply stuff. And I'm gonna try to get all this stuff out. I'm just going to drench this carpet and scrub the crap out of it and then try to shop back this up. And hopefully it comes out because this stuff is so nasty. Day, got everything wrapped up on this, at least on the interior. All the glass is clean. It's so nice when it's all clean. <laughs> it looks new. You can see the interior looks brand new again, which is nice. So I spent a lot of time in this interior, so I wanted to make it look good. But if you guys don't remember, long, long, long time ago, there was a video on this on Center Card on how I made this headliner. Uh, took an image, put a graphic overlay on a piece of polycarbonate, and then cut it out and put it in. So <clears throat> had a vinyl wrap shop, put that on years and years ago. That thing's probably at least five years old, maybe four or five years old. Uh, but I will put the video up if you want to check that out. And then I have videos on everything on this interior, all the way down to me and reupholstering the bucket seats in this thing. So if you go way back, I have an F100 playlist. Um, that's literally, I need to update and I probably will by the end of this video. Um, that has all of the videos of me building this thing. So there is hundreds of videos of this truck getting built on this channel. There's over 600 videos on this channel. So if you're curious on any single part on this truck and how I did it, there is a video on it. So check it out. We're walking outside. You got the big outside and I broke it yesterday, but we'll talk about that later. That's coolant, not oil, so it's fine. But <laughs> it didn't overheat. I broke the intake, but anyways, it's fine. Uh, I'm going to clean this thing out from Havasu so you can see inside of it. We have a big mess, so a bunch of crap. And I need to put these back on so I can actually drive it because believe it or not, the F100 sucks to drive on slicks. Who would have guessed? So I'm gonna go ahead and do one of those little things where you know. All right, there we go, and it's all better. <laughs> so I went and cleaned this thing up. Got the spare tire mounted where it's supposed to be. Some chairs. Got all of our necessities for the truck, and then another hitch in case we need a bigger ball on the hitch. I went ahead and tore out that little drape thing so I can actually see out the back window when I'm driving because you can't see a dang thing in this truck, believe it or not. If you're looking behind you without the West Coast mirrors, you cannot see anything. So I went ahead and fixed that up. And we're starting a sticker collection, so we're gonna start doing the bowl back of this thing. We got our boys from Australia, little four crew cabs guys, no spark, my boy Craig. And then as per usual, we have Solomon on like 900 places. Going crazy. Got Dylan McCool up there, Heat Show Product Boys, MST and Holly, and then of course me and Optima. So yeah, pretty cool little, little group. But I figured the Fox body with the Beach 5 is just, just fits this thing perfectly. So we'll eventually get that whole thing filled up. We gotta do Havasu and all the other places it's been. I gotta get my Tennessee vanity plate on this thing. So I think I'm gonna do that today too. All right guys, so the next thing I need to do on this truck is it's driving me absolutely crazy. Uh, I've been known for blowing out these uh, header gaskets. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know if it's just a crappy material or what it is, but I mean, it makes sense. Anytime this thing sees a two-step, it pretty much blows out the back cylinder every single time. I'm sure it's the crappy Flowtech headers that are on this thing. Uh, it's probably a combination of things. Obviously, gaskets don't like fire, so <laughs> that's probably also part of it. Like a gunshot to a gasket's probably not gonna last very long. So uh, I have another one, another Felpro gasket. A little nicer this time. There's a type of gasket I can't remember a couple of you guys sent it to me uh i guess you guys could leave it again and i'll grab it but i couldn't remember uh, it's a type of composite gasket that's like never leaks they're really really good and that's what i should be running in this thing so this is just temporary fix we'll see how long this one lasts franklin and i consistently go through the driver's side header gaskets all the time i don't know why on both trucks being so different one's a big block one's a small block one's high compression one's low compression but either way we both go through them constantly so i'm gonna go ahead and swap this thing out get it lift up pull the gasket out put a new one in tuck it up and we should be good to go All 
All right, guys. So this is uh, our header gasket, which you can see is uh, pretty much gone. It's uh, no match for the good old two-step on the ice ignition system. But I already know why. It's a paper gasket. I know I need an MLS or some sort of a good composite. A lot of you guys were telling me about the Remflex. I just have one ordered, but this is just what I needed today. Uh, so I went ahead and got another set of these from an uh, auto parts store. So I'm going to toss those in. They're probably going to last two weeks, but whatever. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and swap out all the plugs. So I run an Autolite 3923 in this thing. It's a step colder uh, because I have a lot of compression on this thing and I run a pretty high RPM. So from what manufacturers say from the AFR heads, they want to, you want to usually when you're running higher compression at higher rpm like i am you do a step colder in plug so this i think the 3924 auto light is a little bit hotter uh, so i'm going to step colder running these at 40 thou and it should be pretty good we might adjust it 42 thou might adjust it a little bit less a little bit more i think it might if anything it will be between 40 and 43 thou is where i plug apple in but i mean honestly at that rpm you're really not going to know that much or be able to tell that big of a difference so uh, i'll play with it a little bit right now we're going to put them at 40 and throw them back in so you can see they're pretty dirty um but they, it is pretty consistent they're definitely a little darker than i wanted um but i have that that's the tune that's not the plug so so i've been working on fixing the tune and we should have that fixed now so i'm gonna go and swap these out put a new set in and we should be good to go This thing is absolutely rowdy as you can see and uh, the tune's a lot better like significantly better i can tell the drivability is going to be better everything about the way that this thing runs is way better and the two-step from my ignition is i can't put it into words the camera is not going to do it justice it's like blowing dirt off the walls and it lands on all the cars in here like it's violent it's super violent so i'm super hyped on it the system runs amazing. Master shout out to the guys over at Ice Ignition for making an amazing system. This is the same thing you see in 9,000 plus RPM burnout cars in Australia as well as drag cars. This stuff kicks ass. So this thing runs really, really good. I'm ready to drive it again. And uh, the only downside is you can see, I'm pretty sure I already blew the gasket out. You can see the top of it kind of folded. So uh, yeah, it's already gone. And I give it a couple more two-step hits, which is how this goes. I mean, realistically, you see how violent it is. If you were here in person, just when it hits you in the chest, you're like, how is any gasket going to withstand that? So it's very difficult to get a gasket to stay in this. I've tried four different brands. And I think Remflex, a lot of you guys were recommending because it's an actual, like, all-metal gasket. This one has composites. I don't think any composites are ever going to work in this thing ever again. So you have to stick to a 100% MLS-style gasket for the collector on this thing or for the header gasket on this thing. So we'll definitely have to try that out. But overall, super hyped with it. Sounds good. I'm gonna wrap up a couple more things and we're gonna install some more parts on this and take it out for a drive. All right. These are running good, much better. I don't have a good trying five out for this camera, so I'm right now you guys are gonna just listen to the music. And the biggest thing was the fuel delivery at a clock fuel filter. That's what did it.
spicy. Oh my goodness, I'm in love with this thing again. Wow, as you can see by my hair, <laughs> that's a lot of fun. <laughs> oh my God. Say what's up and uh, shoot a little video for these guys. So if you don't know the jack rod that we've used in a million different videos to hold the jacks up on these trucks uh, when we're changing tires or doing whatever, uh, it's made by these guys. So and they're right here local and in San Diego. They make a hell of a good product. So we'll show you guys a bunch yeah. of that in a little bit. How are you? Good. Oh, that's good. Ooh, do I get the same <laughs> nice. Cool. What are you guys doing today? All right, so the concept is very simple. People come to us or we go to them, but they rev the absolute shit out of their car, oh God. and then we jack it up and we put a jack rod on it. All right. And that's it. I don't, I don't know if I like revving it that high, but we'll do it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's up to you. You can rev it as high as you want. It's just like, it's a complete you know, joke. like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I should have told you to put the headset on. It's uh, that's, that's awesome. It's gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, just did a little video for these guys. You can check them out, AGM products on Instagram. They have a cool little video series where you go ahead and rev this thing, uh, and then we go ahead and put a jack rod underneath it. So uh, if you don't know, jack rod is one of the coolest tools ever invented because if you're anything like me, you jack your vehicle up and you're crawling underneath it, and it's not really that safe. So these guys make a product to fix that. So I'm gonna cruise over here, say hi to these guys. What's up, hey, dude? What's up, dude? Wow. How you doing? Good. So check this out. So explain this to me, because this is the thing that literally saves people's lives. Yes. And it's super convenient, super easy to use. We just used it on this thing. So. It is very easy. Let me open it. Uh, the weight capacity is 3.5 tons. Wow. Um, you don't have to insert the cross pin like the previous version. Yeah. Well, we still have that version also, but uh, we like this one. It's got two sides. This is so satisfying. Two levers. The amount of times we just played with that thing in the shop and we're just like, like it's a yeah. lightsaber and. Yeah, <laughs> and if you check us out on Instagram, we're kind of just, we're just throw this thing around. And, uh, but it's super easy. It's so convenient when you're working on just like quick jobs and yeah. stuff, bleeding brakes, you know, just doing uh, easy tasks where you don't want to get the jack stands out. Yep. And it makes it and so easy. And these things fit literally like everything all the way to the big wheel style jacks. Yeah, yeah. So we do have, uh, if you have the big wheel up front, we have a version that fits that jack. Nice. Perfect. Yeah, so, but this one is great for pretty much all uh, all floor jacks. And this, yeah, one, this is, and this is for you. Yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, guys, got the truck back in the shop because we're not quite done yet. And you can see over here, we got our good old jack rod mounted up on the jack. Look at how clean this thing looks. Little mount, pretty sweet. Little saver, space saver right there. So that's pretty sweet. So every time we use that, we'll have that right there. I'll have a link down below for that. 
And right over here, we have the most game-changing aesthetic piece for my F100 that I've ever had on this thing. Now, you guys know on the look of this truck has not changed since I've been in high school. It's had the same paint job with pretty much the same wheel and tire setup for years now. The exterior has not changed. No, I will never paint it. And it's just always looked like this. It's been a character. Mater, this truck's name is Mater. It's what my parents called it the first time they saw it. And that's just been what it's looked like. It's a white, rusty old truck. It hasn't changed aesthetically much. I did the amber headlights, which has just kind of been a statement of mine that I've done for years now on the front of this truck and i've seen a bunch of you guys do it as well i don't change a lot of stuff on this but my good friend matthew serban actually sent out one of the biggest game changing aesthetic pieces for this truck and i think you guys will like it all right guys so in this box is i i battled back and forth whether this was a good idea or not so i went ahead and i did it because like i said i haven't changed the look of this truck in years so whether it was anything whether the wheels the window tent any paint related stuff i haven't changed anything so this was a big decision for me to make to change anything about this truck but it took a lot of thought and i'm very very happy that i did because i think this is just going to complete the look and the style we're going for so we're going to pop this thing open i am nervous man oh boy look at that there it is oh boy so this is our new NASCAR style tailgate wing for this thing. Oh boy, this is gonna look so sick. I cannot wait, hell yeah. So you can see this is a flat wing. This is exactly what you would see on like on the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Uh, and there's a couple different options. So Matthew Servant was nice enough to send this out for the truck. He actually runs a brand called Sterminator Auto Designs and he has a bunch of really cool stuff for Fox bodies and Ford trucks. So there's a ton of different aftermarket parts. If you wanna do some cool aesthetic stuff, clean up your car a little bit, go check all that stuff out. And this is one of those things. So this fits on a variety of different Ford trucks and it comes with all the billet aluminum powder coated or I believe this is actually anodized uh, wing mounts for this thing that we'll be bolting to the tailgate. So this is something that I could remove if I wanted to. It's not like it's a weld on unit like a lot of guys do a lot some rat rod style and they weld these wings on we can actually bolt this thing on and we can take it on and off if we wanted to oh and on top of that we have one big piece so these will basically sit on the edge here and they will bolt up like so and then it has this nice little contour to it mounts off the back of the tailgate and raises it up quite nicely so uh this will be getting sent out to powder coat but i do want to get all this stuff fitted so we're gonna see what it looks like and put it on right now sure this is 120 gauge steel uh, I could be wrong but it's, uh, it's pretty pretty gnarly so it's not this is not a fiberglass piece this is not a toy <laughs> by any means but I'm gonna be able to see this you guys will so our first initial mock up oh yeah <clears throat> now I can see it in the reflection the lens hell yeah this is gonna look cool oh boy Yes, 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 I like. I just got to snug up the hardware on the back for the, these. I went ahead and put this whole thing together loosely. 
uh, and then I ended up snugging it up at the last second because I don't want to, you never want to just torque one spot, tighten one thing down all the way. And that's for any piece of this entire wing and then go ahead and mark your holes and drill it on one side as one side's torqued down and then you realize that when you go to tor torque the whole thing down, nothing fits. So I went ahead and I waited until all the holes were drilled and everything was pre-threaded and then I went ahead and started slowly tightening everything just to make sure nothing was weird or crooked or anything like that. Uh, and you got to keep in mind this thing will move with the tailgate. When the tailgate is down, you can shimmy the tailgate a little bit, I think like a quarter inch left and right, and that's on any of these trucks. Um, so if your gap doesn't look really good, just drop the tailgate. You can see this thing will shimmy a little bit. There you go. It goes a little bit left and right there. I can close it back up. But look at that. This is not a ricer wing. Look at this thing. This is, this is legit. That is not going anywhere. So. Yeah, it doesn't matter if your truck does 200 miles an hour on an oval track, it's not coming off. So, yeah, went ahead and put some quarter 20 rib nuts that are supplied by Servin uh, with a whole kit. This is everything you get. Uh, the only thing you'll need to buy is a 25 64th drill bit to install the rib nut and then a rib nut tool. That's the only thing you'll have to have if you want to put this on, uh, unless you can think of another creative way to do it. But that's the correct way to do it. So, everything's hooked up, and I like this thing. This thing looks good, so I gotta figure out what color to do it. Alrighty guys, so there you have it. I'm super excited to bring the F100 back in the swing of things with the video series and everything. I haven't done a video with this truck in a little while and it feels just not right. You know, we brought it to Havasu and that was one thing, but actually wrenching on this thing, it's been quite a minute. So massive thank you to all the guys that worked with me on this video. The guys over at AGM are super helpful with the jack ride that we use all the time in this shop. Nice. As well as Matthew Servant over at Servant Auto Design. The guy was super helpful with getting this thing sent out. He was very kind to let me use it on the channel and show you guys. Definitely support the guys that support me. I'll have the links for the wing down below if you want to check that out, as well as the jack rod if you want to grab one of those too. But yeah, man, I'm hyped. This looks really rad. So we have a bunch more parts to throw at this thing. We're not done here. Uh, so in the next video, you're going to see some interior bits that have already been installed and a bunch of other goodies that we're going to put on this thing. So I hope you guys are excited for that as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm super hyped with this thing. It just, it, it just feels good to be back with this thing, you know? So that being said, I hope you guys went on to enjoy today's video. If you did, drop a like on it if you did enjoy it, it would really mean the world to me check out the small block killer collection at 99speedcompany.com with that being said i'll catch you guys in the next video for the f100 later guys